Are you ready? Absolutely. Okay, we're going to do this great. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yep. <laughs> Please tell me a little about yourself and what you do. Okay, so I'm Professor Andrew Ellington. I'm the Fraser Professor of Biochemistry here at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, my job consists of educating students, um, teaching classes, um, doing research, and I also have you know what might be called a service component to my job. So I'm actually evaluated on my research, on my teaching, and on my service. So I would say that this part of things is part of my service. <laughs> now, when I was reading your website and blog, I was really taken aback by how complicated the subject of cellular and molecule, molecular biology is. Now, specifically within your lab, could you tell me what it is? Okay, well, so it's a very large field, but it shouldn't be that complex. Again, I, I think that if you look at most things, you can sort of boil them down to the parts you understand and the parts you don't understand. So let me ask you, what part did you understand? Oh my goodness. Um, well, basically just getting that it was, uh, you know, uh, the environment and uh, cells engineering. and It's hey, a little above my no, it's level. Not. I was no, like, no, 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 it's not. It's absolutely not. That's the whole point. It's absolutely not above anything you can understand. So let's just take, let's just start from there. Cellular engineering. All right. So the idea, presumptively, is we engineer cells. Okay, that's absolutely right. My lab engineers cells. Then you might ask the question, whether you've read my blog or not, how do you engineer cells? So again, I may come back to you and say, how do you think you engineer cells? Well, I guess uh, proteins and okay. what makes proteins? things. Um, <laughs> You that's okay. No, that's scary. Okay. no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually. I'm actually. I'm actually in my non-scary mode right now. I'm actually extremely scary, but I'm in my non-scary mode right now. So you're you're getting the you're getting the full benefit of, of non-scariness. But you will either learn later, or may already know, or may have even heard that DNA makes RNA makes protein. Does that make sense? So yes, I've heard. Our, our blueprint makes the molecule that will help make the protein. So if I want to engineer a cell what I do is I engineer the DNA. I go for the blueprint. If I want to make a, a different house, then I'm going to have to get a contractor to come in and say, you know, if you're going to expand this bedroom, you better you know, have the architecture for it. You better have the plan for it. And that plan is the DNA. And so if I want to engineer a cell, it would be like engineering a house. I'd start with engineering the blueprint for the house. And You've from that, have, then I'd have, then I'd get stuff made from that. You've got to have the blueprint and then you can move on. So right. that, that's so. important. Now, you were talking about this a little, but what are, um, e oh, excuse me, forgive me, I have terrible dyslexia, and uh, evolutionary techniques. Okay. What are evolutionary techniques? So that, that, goes, that goes to what is evolution, and different people have different ways they think about that word. I have a very scientific way they think about that word, and it's actually pretty simple, but it's scientific. So things can replicate, right? You know, we, we, we can see on a daily basis, bacteria can replicate, we replicate. You know, we, 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 we make new versions of ourselves. When we make new versions of ourselves, whether we're bacteria or humans, mutations occur. Some of those mutations are beneficial, some are detrimental. The beneficial ones tend to survive more, the detrimental ones tend to not survive more. Evolution is the process of having things that are mutations that survive more predominate. That's what evolution is. So in the context of my work, where I sometimes even call myself an evolutionary engineer, it would be, going back to the analogy with the house, let's say I've got several different blueprints, and I can make them all at the same time. And in the end, I get to decide which house I want to live in. I let all those houses make themselves, and if one is better than another, it's going to end up being the same house all the way down my block. It's like, wow, that was an awesome add-on bathroom. Way to go! Mutation that made the awesome add-on bathroom. Now my neighbor's going to use that, my neighbor's going to use that, my neighbor's going to use that. I've evolved a new form based on mutating the blueprint, the DNA. That's a great analogy for it. Now, what causes the extra bathroom to be created? Excellent, excellent question. So, um, in, the, in the wild, in nature, um, mutations occur either because we're not completely faithful as we replicate. Are the, the, the machines that replicators are really good. They only make mistakes at about one part in a billion. That said, that means they're probably making two or three mistakes every time they replicate, let's say. 
So, so the mutations just accumulate because of mistakes the machines make. There are also mistakes that occur because of environmental influences. Um, ionizing radiation um, comes down and will zark my chromosomes and cause them to break, and as they're repaired, after they're broken, mutations can creep in. If you happen to live in an environment heavy in mutagens, uh, for example, if you smoke. You don't smoke, right, Ben? Oh, of course not. Outstanding. Oh, no. no, no outsta I outstanding. I, I, I have nothing but admiration for you. So my parents smoked, and I'm pretty sure it caused accumulation of mutations in their DNA. Um, tobacco smoke is a, is a heavy mutagen. So different environmental influences, whether sunlight or cigarette smoke or other compounds, can also cause mutations. So these cause randomly the formation of new types of bathrooms, and sometimes no bathroom at all, sometimes it's just a piece of rubble. But for the ones that sort of work, you know, you may have a bathroom that looks like this, like this, like this, and the best bathrooms win. The best bathrooms replicate better than the others. So it's the coupling of survival and replication with random changes in the building plan, and those random changes come from either mistakes by the machines or from the environment. The blue ribbon bathroom. Whichever one is the best. Whichever one is the best, that's right. Now, what are bipolymers? Polymers. Okay, so the DNA that's in every one of your cells right now is a long polymer, and all a polymer means is an is a set of monomers. So you've probably heard, or if not, I'll tell you for the very first time, that DNA is made from four so-called bases: G and A and T and C, where G pairs with C and A pairs with T. And again, I I learned that about when I was your age, sort of. You know, I may not have known it as well as I do now, but it's still pretty much the same principle. So that's why we can say, you know, if we're writing DNA or reading DNA, it goes G, G, C, A, C, G, T, T, C, A, C, C, G, da, 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 da. Each one of those is a monomer contributing to the polymer. A protein made from DNA is also a polymer. Now we have 20 letters rather than four, and we'll read, you know, K, W, L, D, E, E, F, Q, Y, K, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, again, that's a polymer. Now, those are what we might call sequence-specific polymers. You can read them. Okay. Now there are other polymers. Plastic is a polymer. All right. Now it is a non-sequence specific polymer. All the chains are sort of the same and they're all wrapped around one another and they're making a big amalgam like that. Also a polymer, but not a sequence specific polymer. But it's made from individual monomers that polymerize to make plastic. Wow. It's amazing that you think everything is... Uh, are most things, most things are made of polymers and connection made all things. Not all things, but many things. So it's interesting because there's a, there's a really fun book. Um, it's called Seven Clues to the Origin of Life. Okay, and, it, and in this book, it's treated like a detective story. Where did life come from? And the author of that book actually doesn't think life came from polymers. He thinks life came from crystals. Okay, and a crystal is not like a polymer, and it doesn't line up, line up, line up, line up, line up, line up, line up. It's more like uh, an amal an, an, a, a, a lattice, a lattice structure. Like if you've grown, you know, my kids have grown salt crystals and sugar crystals. It's a great experiment to do at home. You just let the water evaporate and you get a crystal, yes. right? That's a matrix. That's not a polymer. And so in this book, which I don't necessarily think is right, but it's an awesome book, um, the idea is that living systems arose from matrices rather than polymers. They eventually became polymers. Like we, a quartz crystal. That's right. That's right. The polymer, you know, arose from the crystalline state. And that's, again, what this book would say, not necessarily what I would say. But not, I, I guess I'm just responding to not everything is a polymer. There are some objects, like yes. crystals, that are solid, but not polymers. Fascinating. And somewhere in between those is glass, which is not exactly a crystal and not exactly a polymer. It's sort of the, got left it's in a, the it, middle. It, it got left in the middle. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amorphous state, so-called. Are you a teacher? I am a teacher. I think you just are like an amazing teacher. Just well, thank you very talking much. with you now, I've already learned so much. Ah, but you're but 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 then you then you have then you've missed then you've missed the point. What is education? Well, I'd say education is expanding your knowledge. Correct. And who does that? Yourself. All right then. You 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 in fact do get it. Very good. All education is self-education. Teachers are guides or mentors or well, you're a very good guide. All right, but but you're doing all the heavy lifting. Let's just be clear on the subject. 